I'm going to use chartreuse uh, thread, same size, the 140 or, or the 210. I'm going to tie in up the head there. And with this one, I either use gold eyes or I use silver eyes. It doesn't really matter. And I almost always use lead eyes for this fly because a crab, you want it planted to the bottom. Uh, the shrimps and the minnows, you can get away with lighter stuff because they are up in the water column and a lot of times you're fishing them in weedy situations but this crab on the sand flats there's no weeds no nothing clean bottom I want this thing to sink straight to the bottom so for that reason I always use lead eyes on this one okay. we'll tie this one with some silver this one I'll tie a little bit farther towards the eye just by a hair just like that I'll wrap down the shank. I'm going to go just a little bit around the shank, just by a hair. Now I'm going to use some um, cactus chenille. Ice chenille will work just fine. Anything that's flashy and is on a rope that you can wrap around the hook. Now to tie this in, I'm going to strip out. I don't know if you can see on the camera there, but I'm stripping out a few of the pieces of flash off the end of the piece of cord or the rope. That way I can just tie straight into that piece of cord there. Now what I'm going to do is just wrap this around. And for each wrap I do, I'm going to take the flash and kind of stroke it back. Just like that. And usually it only takes two or three wraps. You don't want to go too crazy with this. Tie it off. At first, this looks kind of crazy. I just start trimming out some of the tag, tag end stuff. You'll end up with flash all over your pants and your shirt. This stuff's kind of messy. And I'll stroke it all back and wrap backwards on it. Because all I'm trying to do is put a ball of this flash right on the rear of the fly. Okay, so once I've done that, now I'm going to make um, the claws or the legs, I don't know what the fish think they are, but I think they're probably claws. I'm going to take my polar fiber, and this time I'm using the shrimp color. It's not quite white, but it doesn't have much color to it. And I trim out about half the amount that I uh, used on the quan and the bonefish fly, probably about the, a quarter of the size of a pencil. I'm going to rip, rip it off so I get a fairly blunt end. I mean, it's not horribly blunt, but it's not nice, long, and tapered. And I only want that to stick out the back of the fly about an inch or so. So I'm going to tie it in on my far side first. I'm going to tie it in on the side of the fly. Just like that. And then I kind of trimmed it at a bit of an angle there so I have some area to taper the body a little bit, if it'll cooperate with me. Here we go. Okay, so once I've done that side, I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side. Had no questions today, really. Anybody yeah. struggling with the steps, or <laughs> don't believe me, or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> a lot easier. You can see what you're well, and that's the other thing is a lot of the flies you see nowadays. You look through catalogs and you hear what's working. They're way too crazy, way too flashy, too much stuff going on. There's no reason to be torturing yourself with a lot of those flies. I mean. A little flash helps, you know, a little color helps, but I think a lot of them these days have gotten a little out of hand. So now, yeah, well, exactly, and they charge you $7 a piece for a lot of them, too. And I'm also the kind of guy where I don't want to spend that much time on, on flies. I want to be fishing, so...
what I did there was I just tied in, you know, two basic claws or legs off the back, um, split, and I basically used that flash to to split them. Okay. Now this one's going to be a little harder than some of the others. That's merely because we're going to have quite a bit of material going on up here by the the head of the fly. And I am pretty picky about what I use for this fly, merely because of the color. If you look at these EP fibers, you can see it's not one solid color. It looks kind of sandy, kind of yellowish. Um, this is the color I use for the sand flats. There's another color I use that has like blues and grays and whites mixed in. That's what I use for my blue crab imitation. I'll basically do the same exact thing with camel colored super or, uh, polar fiber, root beer colored cactus chenille, and then the darker color of this. So those are my two crab colors. So how you work with this stuff is you leave it in the package like this. If you take this out of the package and you start pulling it apart, it's going to be a royal nightmare. So what I do is I kind of just pinch the whole thing and pull out a clump just like that. And usually what I'll do is I'll double it over. So you get the thickness of, I don't know, a piece of carpet maybe, so roughly. Then what I'll do is I'll trim that in half. So I end up with a piece that's about oh two inches. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure eight this. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take the tape, the claws and twist them together just like that to kind of keep them out of the way. I'm going to figure eight this just like I figure eighted the quan. This can be a little harder to deal with because it's not a solid cord. Now you can see that first wrap. I didn't tie it all the way into the butt. You can see I have a space, so I use my little trick of holding on to the bobbin and both pieces, both ends of the uh, EP fibers and pulling it backwards until I get it where I want it and cinch down on it. Then I torque down on it. There we go. So now I'm going to take my my thread and leave the leave that wrap right up against that uh, piece of uh, EP fibers. Now I'm going to get a little bit thicker piece. I use the that first piece and make it fairly thin just to make it easier for me to work with for that first one. And you're going to end up wasting a lot of this stuff just because it kind of comes out of the package messy. Now I double the size. I trim the loop. What I'll do is I'll clean up the other end so there's not any. Now this is where it gets a little more complicated. Now I left this so there's about an inch hanging off of each side. This one I want even longer. And the reason I want it even longer is because I want to be able to discern what's that clump and what's this clump. Uh, if you tie them in at the same length, you won't be able to figure eight it because you, you won't be able to tell which clump is which. So I just do my loose wrap, kind of get it into place. Scoot it back. Now can you see what I mean? How now I can tell which clump is which. I can see which one's the short one, which one's the long one. So to continue my figure eight, I can just grab the long clump and just do my figure eight and kind of split them. Okay. And now once I've done that, I'm going to trim this clump out of here to about the same length of the first one. That way when I tie in my next clump, I tie it in long and I'll be able to tell the difference between those clumps. That's a big, big part of this fly. If you don't do that, it's going to be a nightmare. And the first couple I tied were a nightmare because I wasn't doing that. And I'll make this one roughly the same, same thickness as that other clump. If you get a few trapped in there from a different clump, it's not a big deal. You just don't want to grab half half of it and get it caught in there. And I basically just continue this until I get all the way up to the eye of the crab. Have any of you guys ever saltwater fish before or have a trip coming up? Both? I grew up in Miami. Oh, cool. <clears throat> 
So you we, said you were down in Florida. Whereabouts? Northern Florida. Northern Florida. Mm-hmm. You Gulf or the Gulf? Yeah. Panama we, City. Uh, no, Pensacola area, oh, Fort Walton yeah. Beach. Fairly close to Panama City. Okay, so this probably just take one more clump. See, once you get fairly comfortable with it, you can just start really getting going. Okay, now this is going to look like a giant mess Are you, before uh, you trim it. Well, those four clumps you added after you added the, the first two on the side. Are yep. They, are they, you're trimming them all the same length? Yeah, you can see, well, yeah, as you progress, you kind of want them the same length, so when you tie in that longer piece, you can tell what the longer piece is right, that you're right, working right. with. But when you trim, you just trimmed them all up. Uh, yeah, this isn't, how, the this isn't how the end fly is going to be, so you can trim them a little shorter, okay. you can trim them a little longer. Uh, I basically just trimmed them to keep all that long stuff out of the way as I progress forward. So this isn't how the fly is going to end up here. We're going to finish it off in a sec. So I just whip finish right behind the eye. Now what you're going to do is you're kind of going to stroke all the fibers forward, separate them from the tails. <clears throat> Just like that. Can you kind of see that? Now I'm going to trim it. And this comes down to personal preference on how you want to trim it. Uh, you can trim it round, you can kind of taper it back, you can do uh, whatever you want, whatever looks crabby to you. Uh, usually what I'll do is I'll trim them fairly long, uh, so I have two healthy chunks sticking out the side, but I won't really round them. It'll be kind of a, a streamlined arrow shape going back. So usually I do the far side first, and I'll kind of start. This is hard to do on camera, isn't it? So I'll start fairly close, and I kind of round it as I go backwards. Just like that. You never really get it perfect on the first shot either. There's always some stragglers. Just trim them all out of there. And then I try to match that as good as I can on the other side. Just like that. And one is always, I mean, I, no matter how many of these freaking things I tie, I can never get it perfect. I tie mine where I grab both of them and I pull them straight up. Pull them out. straight up? Yeah. yeah, that's actually not and a bad I, idea. I trim them together, yeah. and if it's a mistake, they're equally... Equally a mistake? <laughs> Maybe I should try that on the next one. I always learn new Put ways. Put time. If, if it comes out right, you're done. Yep. And I fished them. Like this one, one side is just a hair bigger than the other one. And I fished them like that. They were just fine. Fish don't seem to care. It just bugged me a little, that's all. So that's it. Um, you can see that's not the most complicated crab in the world. Uh